Hey guys, and welcome to episode number 32 of Give It The Beans. Now, I am coming to you today to talk to you about a topic that is quite hot at the moment, and that is shows being cancelled and rescheduled. Now, for many of you, it may feel and seem like the absolute end of the world. And believe me, I know, I get it, I understand, I went through all of these same emotions last week and it legit was one day everything was fine it was a case of oh yeah we're just going to limit our numbers of people getting in and you know there's as long as there's less than 500 everything should be absolutely fine and then all of a sudden the next day it was like right this show's cancelled a few hours later this show's cancelled few hours later this should cancel and it was all on the one day that three or four of my shows all just got boom done and not only that I had a lot of clients who it was their first show ever some of them had been dieting for in excess of 18 weeks and they would be two three weeks away from their first ever show and you know you put so much into it, not only those 18 weeks, but some of them have been perhaps thinking about this moment for, say, two years, maybe a little bit longer, and then to have all of a sudden it taken away with two weeks to go can be pretty damn demoralising. And I'm sure for many of you there was a lot of tears, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. I know that me personally, I didn't show this or vent this at all on Instagram. I was absolutely raging. Like, I am usually very, very good at being in control of my emotions and not letting things get on top of me, but I just allowed it to, and I, I, I knew how I was reacting, and I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go with this because I need to get it out. Now, my fiance at the time uh, was in Fort Ventura. So quite good for her that she wasn't around. Uh, not that I would be that way around her, but in general, um, I just needed to be on my own and I didn't want to speak to anyone. Um, but you have to come to a conclusion and realization, right? So you get frustrated for a wee while and then you need to think about, right, well, what are your options? So for me at the time, it was, well, I've got this other show that by the time this podcast goes out, it will either be two days out or it will be completely done and uh, not happening and I'll be re uh, rebounding. Um, but for many clients who have been preparing that long, um, some of my clients, I'm going to talk you through the two different options that I gave them uh, and what I sort of favoured. And I hope that these options can give you a little bit of clarity, confidence on what you can do and also give you a peace of mind that it's okay and that you'll come back again and you'll be even better than you were. So here's a few scenarios. Scenario one, my client says, you know, Vaughn, after the first two got cancelled, I was really praying that the third one got cancelled. Um, prep's been really, really hard. I didn't realise how hard it would be and it's really affected my mental health. She went, I've got a taste for it. I want to do it but I want to do it right and I want to do it in a better way. Can, you know, what's your advice? And I went, right, there's a little bit of hesitation up in the air how long, you know, these shows are going to be off for, when they're going to be rescheduled, we don't know. So rather than have this wave of uncertainty, why don't we say, right, we have recomp the body to an absolute super position to grow, right? So if you're sitting, say, by that point, she was three weeks out, she's sitting two kilos above stage weight. Now, two kilos above stage weight, that's usually where I would start to push someone up. Now, you have then a super platform to, like, physiologically to grow. You are very sensitive to insulin, to nutrients in general. So any food that you put in, if it's in a controlled manner, you will, number one, your training performance will skyrocket. Your energy levels will skyrocket. Your ability to recover, recuperate, will skyrocket. So we've went straight into her 
into a push phase and we'll push her weight up for the next sort of 20 to 26 weeks and you're probably thinking well Vaughn how much are you going to push her weight up now again that depends right it is person dependent on okay where is body composition where's body fat where's muscle mass how much body fat do they add and whereabouts do they add it do they add it in the sort of right places or do they perhaps get fat really, really quick so for her we'll probably add on total maybe 10 kilos in a good six months now that will take us close to the end of the year now when we get to the end of the year what we will do is then have like a good sort of 10 week recomp not too aggressive but <coughs> excuse me just enough to pull some body fat off <coughs> before the christmas period and then have a dietary break so she can enjoy the christmas period and then start prep as of January. By that point, we'll have attained a large amount or a new amount of muscle mass will be, the physique will be in a superb position. And ultimately when she comes back on stage or she goes on stage for the first time, the physique will demand attention. Now, I think that that scenario really will show, the ones that do that will show how much you love bodybuilding. It will show how much you love the process it will show that you're actually in this to be better every single day. You've got this relentless pursuit to just level yourself up, level your physique up, rather than, oh, I'm just in it for the glitz, I'm in it for the glam. What you'll see a lot of is people will obviously get emotional because of that, because of the show's being cancelled. And there, there can be a massive, like, fuck it mentality, right? One which leads to a Domino's every night or a takeaway every other night, leads to binging on chocolate throughout the day. And before you know it, they, they, they felt great about their body, they looked good. And then within like a space of a three week period, they've maybe gonna gain 10, 12 kilos. And I've seen that, especially in females. I've seen it in guys as well. But in females, you know, if that happens, it ruins an off season. So let's say by the time those three weeks are over, you then come to the realization that, okay, wow, uh, I was a total, eating like a total dick and uh, you know I need to get a handle on things. You may have to keep dieting or diet again to get back down before you push up. So then you've not only not done your show, you've rebounded terribly and then you need to continue to diet when the ultimate goal is to continue to add muscle mass. You have to spend longer pulling body fat off before you do that. You're probably thinking, well, why can't I just keep continue to gain? And the reason being is that there comes a certain point visually, physiologically, where if you continue to mass and add weight and add weight, you will just gain body fat at an alarmingly high rate versus muscle mass. And in that instance, you just then become fat. So that's just not what you want. So I think that this these past sort of few days will really show people or it will show the people that really are in it for the journey and the process. Now, it don't mean like, it's all right to be angry. I had taken three years away from the stage and I'm fortunate enough that I got to compete. You know, I, I managed to do one show and um, this second one, is, they say it's definitely going ahead, but again, there's a fog of uncertainty and uh, I'll be happy the fact I've just gotten one because many people haven't had the opportunity to do it. Um, I had prepared for three years. You know, before that, there was a year before I competed in men's physique. And to have that all taken away in one day was really, really frustrating. And I've not been that angry in a hell of a long time. But I got over it. And then, you know, the next day, I was fine. I, was t I turned 30 and I got a new car. And all was well. I felt good. Two bros were saying they're definitely going ahead. London announced that you could still travel in and out the, in and out the city. That transport wouldn't be affected. And then all of a sudden, I, so I fall asleep on the couch at night, and then I wake up um, to an email from Ryanair telling me that Rona's flight, my fiance, coming home from Fort Venture on Saturday, was cancelled. Happy fucking 30th birthday, Vaughn, right? So that created a whole lot of stress. I was up for the next couple hours, speaking to her, um, trying to you know help her get it sorted, get a refund and whatnot, because 
you know, they were adamant that the Ryan were adamant they weren't going to try really do anything to help. So I went to bed, woke up in the morning to a text from her saying, okay, right, you know what, we've got a flight, it's on Jet 2, it is the last flight leaving Spain, it was 900 quid. However, it's flying them back to Glasgow, um, and the car's in Edinburgh. So this coming Sunday, or by the time this is out, I'll have driven to Glasgow to pick her and her pal up, and then drive them to Edinburgh and come back. Bear in mind, this was a trip that I was supposed to be on, um, and decided not to go because of business, and I thought potentially I don't want to get stuck abroad and quarantined. From day one, they've been locked down in the hotel, so if I was there, I wouldn't have been able to gym, I wouldn't be able to do anything, um, and that well, that would have been my season over. I wouldn't have even had a chance to do one show. So, you know, kind of a good decision, or I'm glad that I didn't didn't do it, because I got the opportunity and the chance to compete. Um, but, you know, it was a good break for Rona. So, option number two that you can potentially choose to do. Now, the day that I'm recording this podcast, PCA have said, right, there's potential another date for the Saxon Classic and that will be on the 26th of July or that will be on the sort of the week after, the first week in August. Now that gives people 18 weeks from, by the time this podcast goes out, 17 weeks and you're thinking, right, you were sort of two or three weeks away and now you've got 17, what can you do? Now, here's a suggestion for you. If you really, really want to compete and you're adamant and you've got that package and you know you'd be competitive and you know you would be, you would have done well, what you can do is increase calories ever so slightly. Let's say you add an extra sort of two or 300 every single day. Strip back your cardio. Uh, try and mitigate the effects of stress on the body. Put the body in a position that you're, you feel good, your training performance is good, sleep's good, but you're not gaining body fat at an alarmingly high rate or at all. So if you're two kilos above stage weight, you're 18 weeks out, Okay, let's say you maybe want to get up to four kilos, five kilos away, right? So you bump your calories up, you check just like you would do weekly, every other day, conditioning, make sure things are happening. But what not to do is don't say, oh, well, I'm 18 weeks away, so fuck it. And have a little bit of a binge. Because it can be so easy to do, and then you just fall out the routine, and before you know it, you're six weeks away from the actual show, that's been rescheduled, you're not ready, you're not going to be ready, and you've wasted almost half a year. So you must maintain the same meticulousness with your just habits in general. So you're making sure that you're, even though you've reduced your step count, you're still getting in. Even though you've reduced your cardio, you're still getting in. You're still going and training like an absolute fucking madman or a mad woman, trying to progress where you can, on more food, you should be able to progress. No problem whatsoever. If you tell me that you can't, it's probably because you don't work hard enough. And that's not me having a dig or anything like that. It's just what we see in competitors. Often their calories get low and they will then decide, okay, I feel don't feel that good, so I'm not going to train that hard. So what I would say is get food up to where your performance can continue to make step forward, step forward. And here's the way to look at it. You've upped food, but then what you've also done is you've upped energy expenditure throughout your training because your fuel demands have went up because you're shifting more load. But also what's happened is that your recovery demands out with training have went up. So then that must be matched with nutrition as well, whether that means that you maybe perhaps need a little bit more protein, guys, you may have been on a you know, different stack design. For example, if you were two, three weeks out, you may have been using Trembolone. Do you need to be or still run Trembolone 18 weeks away from a show? Absolutely not. My suggestion would be pull it out. You do not need it. If you want to, you can. Like personally, what I would do is I would lower overall total drug usage, I would take out fat burners as well, and I would save all that for the arse end of prep, right? So you've been two three, weeks away, two, two, three weeks away, you decide to pull that out and save it. And if you're able to maintain a reasonable shape, by the time you get back to six weeks out, 
and you put these things back in, your lipolytics, such as your clenbuterol, perhaps maybe you use T3, then you shove in something like Trembolone, and then you've got Orals four weeks out, just you're going to look awesome, and you're going to look better, you're going to get harder, you're going to get drier. Now, females, let's say naturally, you, again, will need to be really, really on point with your food. It can be so easy to just think, fuck it, and then again, that whole scenario of not being ready. So, as we said, we've upped food and we've got to, say, we started at 18 weeks out, we've upped food, we've got down to four, maybe we're four or five kilos above stage weight and uh, we get to that and we maybe we get there and we're sort of 10 weeks out. Then we begin the same process again, nothing changes, all right? Because then when you get to your show or shows in that time period, a lot of other federations should have announced rescheduling. In fact, I know that PCA have, IDFA have, UKUP have announced like a British final that you can just show up for. I'm not too sure about the, the natural feds on what they're doing, but there will be an opportunity to compete this year. So if it's something you definitely want to do, that would be my suggestion. However, I think what we need to all realise, and this one thing I had to take a... Uh, I had to take a piece of my own advice, is that the stage will always be there, right? So although there's this fog of uncertainty of, oh, maybe my gym's going to close, I'm not too sure if I can get to the gym or I want to go to the gym, and maybe we're going to catch this, you know, coronavirus or whatnot. Well, if you go about creating unnecessary stress in your head, your body's going to react the same way as it would whether you know it reacts to stress with the same way as whether it's mental or physical, so you then start increasing levels of cortisol, increasing levels of catecholamines, which will in turn go against recovery, adding tissue, partition nutrients, and it for sure as hell is going to go against mobilizing fat. So if by all means you're trying, you want to do a two bro show, and you know they're the only fed really surviving and and trying to actually find different venues and, and get things to go ahead in this uncertain period, then you've got to try and keep stress low. And that was one thing I realised. I went, you know what? I'm just going to continue to live life how I live life. And if anything happens, such as lockdowns or anything like that, then, you know, you deal with it and you understand that perhaps that some things are a bit bigger than you. And two weeks not getting to the gym is not the end of the world. Like, you're not going to lose all your quote-unquote gains if you keep your protein high, you don't eat like a dick, you get some home workouts in, you maybe perhaps use some resistance bands. Personally, I will have a gym that I could train at. Not many people will, though, and I totally get that. But for the majority of my clients, I work with a lot of competitors who are PTs, gym instructors and whatnot, they will have keys to gyms or the, a, a private lockup or just a gym in general that's going to refuse to shut and it'll open at certain times of the day. But if you can't do that, then just accept it and do what you can. For example, if you're a PT, focus on your business, focus on your clients, focus on your lead gen, focus on your systems, focus on improving. And even if you're not a PT, focus on personal development and growth, the relationship with your partner, what you can both do to become better human beings. Now, if I was to flick back to the start of this sort of podcast and give you my views on what I would do with programming and nutrition in both instances, here's what they would be. So scenario number one is that you're going to go straight into a gaining phase. Now, do we necessarily go from two weeks out, right? What we've probably done is we've probably reduced lower back loading quite a bit. Why? Because you just can't recover. You don't have much body fat there. Right? So what would, would we go straight back into, you know, Smith rows, RDLs, rack pulls, all you know, all in the water? Now we wouldn't. What we would do, we'd keep the program exactly the same for a good three or four week period. And we'd probably run reps in reserve. Simply because the body is not recovered, the neural system is not recovered enough to handle that all static load. In fact, with the females, I say females because I've not had any guy, uh, one guy still going ahead, 
the females that have been sort of pulled out prepping out of gaining phase, I gave them I gave them a deload straight away. So what we'd done was I said, right, four to five days completely off training. I don't want you touching a weight, I want you chilling, be sedentary, focus on napping, sleeping, staying off your feet. When you get back to training, I want you to do one or two pump sessions, then I want you to take another day off, and then when you come back, we go for it. we go for it. Now in that time period, maybe perhaps we've had a couple of days off the diet. I say a couple of days off the diet. I just don't don't act like a dick. Don't be a dick. Don't eat like a bell end. Just eat like an adult. In fact, that's probably terrible advice because the average adult eats shockingly bad. So maybe I should just say eat sensibly, right? And enjoy a couple of treats here or there or, you know, one or two meals. Now, when we get back to training, as I said, the program would stay the same. And then after three, four weeks, we feel good. We've had a little bit of body fat, training performance is on its way up. We would then look at one's ability to recover. Okay, so we've maybe reduced volume, total volume as well. So we think, right, can we add in some lower back loading movements or more lower back loading movements, but also can we add a bit more volume? Because we were then looking to try and bring up some weak areas for the, the next year. So like, right, okay, quads are lagging behind, but they were struggling to recover. Can we add in a couple more sets across the week? Can you be strategic in where you perhaps add them in on you know sort of which given lower day you do that? Or as a female, do you tag on them on your full body day? Could be an option. Maybe you've, maybe you've been, you know, you, you were struggling to recover, so you changed from a pendulum squat to a, a leg extension. Okay, can we go back to the pendulum, or can we add in another set on the pendulum, or the Smith, or the Hack, or whatever your sort of quad loading movement is of choice? And then you just, you know, you, you assess. Okay, how are they recovering? How are they growing? How, they, like, how's the log book? coming along, is that progressing? If the answer is yes, keep doing what you're doing, right? And then you again, you're just reactive on a weekly basis. Okay, let's take the other scenario where you're still gonna maintain more of a leaner physique. Do you think that in that time frame you'd be able to go back to smashing RDLs, smashing rack movement? Again, this is person dependent, right? Like one week out, I'm still RDL, and why? Because my my lower back, my erectors, they're pretty strong, and they can handle a little bit of load just from working working on them over time, over time, over time. But highly unlikely that you're going to add too much volume in that sort of six, eight, maybe ten week interim period between having sort of kind of quote unquote your prep being ended and then you sort of getting back up to almost a baseline level of calories or maintenance, because in the first option, we're trying to get to maintenance and then get slightly above in a slight surplus, whereas the other one, we're just trying to get to maintenance. And, you know, along with that, maybe excess more food, we are going to get a little bit of water weight, muscle glycogen, that's going to be reflective in, in an increase in the scales. Would you be looking to bring up some body parts? Would you be trying to focus on hypertrophy? No, are you still going to try and focus on progressing your logbook? Fucking right you are. You've got much more like food in the system to do so, so why not do it? Now, that to me, those two options really are the only ones. Option number three, and do not do this, would be wallow in a state of self-pity. Think that the world is ending and everything is against you. And it is so unfair that you are not able to do your show and step on stage. If this is you, I'd have a good hard look at yourself in the mirror. And I'd then start to think, right, well, it was pretty damn like it was a pretty damn privilege for you to be able to do this. There are some people in the world that can't actually afford to eat. And when you think of it like that, then we're pretty lucky that we can choose not to eat that much and we can choose to manipulate our energy balance to get to a certain body compositional standpoint. 
Whereas some people in the world just, you know, they struggle to get money to even get a tin of beans. Notice the pun, no pun intended, give it the beans. However, when we think of prep that way, you know, that I, I try and get my clients to think of it that way. When they tell me they're hungry, oh my God, I'm starving. I'm like, no, you're not. Uh, and, and if you are hungry and you mad cravings and stuff like that, when you think about that and then you practice a little bit of gratitude, you really do change your whole view of prep itself. And it becomes so much easier. Now, what I would say is, if you are going to do option number two, please don't then, you know, do a show in July and August and then go do the British finals. Because honestly, by that point, you will have lost tissue. It is inevitable. Females, <coughs> naturally, you're losing tissue. And you're going to need some time to regain it. Guys on gear, let me know where your head is. When you've been dying for that long and that much drugs, right? And how, your, how much patience you have, how, how your relationship is, especially if you've run train for a while. Only bodybuilders will know that. So this was just a short podcast for me that I wanted to shed a little bit of light of what I would do in this uncertain time. And I hope it really helps. So this will go live sooner than I would usually put them. But I wanted to just... You know, speak out, speak up, uh, and give people a little bit of advice. So wherever you are, whatever you do, give it the beans.